The law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Now we finally have a name for that word. No one has ever seen God, the only Son who is in the bosom of the Father. He has made him known. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. You just spend some time dwelling on that. I wanted to unpack something else. How many of you have ever been to Midnight Mass at Easter, Christmas, maybe Easter? It's Christmas. I told you I was camping out there. Midnight Mass, Christmas. It, actually, in all my years, we've never been to Midnight Mass here, so I don't know if we do this or not. But before Midnight Mass, they have called the, they call it the Nativity of Our Lord Jesus Christ from the Roman Martyrology. And what it is, it's actually it's very beautiful, and I promise you, I'm not going to chant it. But it is a historical proclamation of Christ. Because at Christmas, we're celebrating the Word becoming flesh. We're celebrating that the Lord and Savior of the world came to us in a historical space and time. And so what the church does is at the beginning of Midnight Mass, Christmas, they have you step back and think about that time period, what was going on. And I think this is so beautiful because what I'm going to read to you um, really captures the covenants of the Old Testament. There were several covenants that were made with major players in the Old Testament, Abraham, David, Noah. Major covenants that were made where God bound himself to us, made a covenant, not a promise, a covenant. And so you're going to hear that as I as a share what I'm going to share. But then you're also going to hear this very historical event. I just think it's very beautiful for us. So I started with John chapter 1, almost kind of the in the clouds, the in the beginning. Now let's talk about the Christ becoming, word becoming flesh. <coughs> the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ. I encourage you all just to close your eyes as I read this. The 25th day of December, when ages beyond number had run their course, from the creation of the world. When God, in the beginning, created heaven and earth and formed man in his own likeness. When century upon century had passed since the Almighty set his bow in the clouds after the great flood, a sign of covenant and peace. In the 21st century, since Abraham, our father in faith, came out of Ur of the Chaldeans. In the 13th century, since the people of Israel were led by Moses in the exodus from Egypt. Around the thousandth year since David was anointed king. In the 26th in the 65th week of the prophecy of Daniel, in the 194th Olympiad, in the year 752 since the foundation of the city of Rome, in the 42nd year of the reign of Caesar Octavian Augustus, the whole world being at peace. 
Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, desiring to consecrate the world by his most loving presence, was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And when nine months had passed since his conception, was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judah, and was made man. <coughs> First time I ever heard that at midnight mass, it actually sent chills through my spine. So when you sit back and think about it, we oftentimes think about Jesus as being way up here and apart from our lives. That Jesus was a real person, in real time, time and place. The thing is, though, He did not just left us. He didn't just go away. He's not like prophets. He's not like some other historical religious figures. He is intimately, he wants to be intimately involved in our lives today. So much so that at Mass we receive his body, blood, soul, and divinity. We, we, we receive the King of the Universe who came to us in human flesh 2,000 years ago. What I'm sharing with you today, or who I'm sharing with you today, is a person. It's the person of Christ Jesus. Everything that you do, everything that you learn, everything that you see as you explore the Catholic faith, all harkens back to Christ. If what we do does not point to Christ, we shouldn't be doing it. Or it doesn't, it's not fruitful. Everything from the prayers that we say at Mass to the vestments that, we, that, the, that the priests and deacons wear, to the prayers that you pray, to the catechism that you read, to the Bible that you read, is all pointing to a person, the person of Christ. And as you walk on your faith journey this year, and by the way, I admit to share this, those of you that are candidates, those of you that are catechumens, I've been where you are. I was baptized, um, I guess you could say as a Catholic, I don't like to use that term, but I was baptized using Trinitarian formula. <laughs> uh, but I was I was baptized, but my my parents didn't raise me in the faith. They they wanted me to decide when I got older what was important to me. When I was the day of my 17th birthday, a girl that I was kind of going out with at the time, um, her sister's boyfriend was shot and killed by by their friend. And I remember being at this funeral mass like three days later, um, saying the Our Father. And there was a voice inside of me that compelled me to ask the Lord to be a more important person in my life. It was a, it was a 17 year old, and I just felt this movement, praying for, uh, you know, Brandon's, Brandon's casket was there, it was funeral mass, he was an eighth grader. And I just remember saying to myself, Lord, I want you to be a more important person in my life. My prayer for you all this year, for the rest of your life, is that you say that prayer. That you ask the Lord, the King of the universe, the one who came 2,000 years ago, the Word made flesh and dwelt among us, to be the Lord and Savior of your life. And to pray and to ask Him, Lord, I don't understand all this stuff that you're talking about. It's all confusing. 